Me now. Just believe what I say. Take it in and go to the scripture. Reference even. What are they talking about? That the pastor says so. So let me read it. I don't mind. I don't have a problem with folks that like to discuss the word with me. See, some people, you ought to just believe it because I said so. You can't live in that day now. You can't live in that time where 50 years ago in the church where you just believe it and that's it. You better rightly divide what some folks are saying to you. I'm talking about we're the last day. Do you know in the last days there's going to be false, false crisis, right, false Christ, C-H-R-I-S-T-S, Christ that's going to raise up everywhere. Individuals are going to raise up calling themselves Jesus. Saying that they work miracles. You know the devil can work miracles too. When, when, when they came before uh, 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 Pharaoh, Pharaoh's magicians threw down their rods. And they turned into serpents. But, but, but Moses' rod ate up all their little rods. So if you just run in here and there looking for a miracle work, you'll find the miracle work, but you'll find more than what you're looking for. You ought to find people that are rightly dividing the word of truth. I missed it to me. I know you get bored a little bit, but that's all right. We get tired when we come out of word. If we was bowling, everybody feel all right. I don't know. I don't mind bowling, but I love the word more than bowling. Stay out and do what you want to do. All you want to do. We come to church, feel like folks are quick. Fifteen minutes. Get it in and get it out and keep going. So you got to dissect this, but we in the last time, Sam. I'm trying to tell you it's time to be watchful under prayer. Yeah. You need to be seeking for the more of God. Don't get caught up in all of this foolishness that's going around here. I don't care if you love that preacher. You better find out what he preached. I say that because I, I believe I, I love to enjoy people preaching. But I, I want to hear what you say. And if it don't line up to the word of God, I don't care how popular you are. I don't want to hear you. If you're not lining up with the scripture and, and rightly divide the word of God, I don't want to hear you. And you are false preaching. And we don't want to say that because we just judge it. We're judging righteous judgment. If I was sitting standing up here telling you that the Lord is going to come September 13, 2013, you got a right to challenge me. You got a right to say you're a false preacher because you just gave me a date and the Bible said nobody knows the date. We don't challenge on stuff like that. We challenge on how much money we give. That's what we challenge on. No, abstain from all, notice this, abstain from all appearance of evil. We live in the day now, if it's, if, you know what, if the Holy Ghost is saying it's not right, don't do it. All right. I don't care how folks are trying to make it right, stay away from it. The Bible says the very appearance, even if it looks like it's evil, stay away from it. Years ago, the saints used to always teach, you don't try to get as close to the edge as you possibly can. Without falling over. Amen. There was a gentleman. He, he needed somebody to drive his, his family from one coast to the other. And he was going to hire a driver to do it. And so he, he interviewed some drivers. And he said, now, if, suppose you were driving up in the mountains in California. You know, if you were going on those high cliffs and stuff, what would you do? And, you know, he said, oh, I would just, i try to get as close as I can. Show you how really good I am driving. And all that. He said, thank you very much. Next, she said, well, what if you're driving through, you know, and, and there's really no police, but, you know, you, you think you have this, all that. I would gun it because I would try to get them as fast as I could to get them where the next thing. He said, thank you, everyone. Uh, uh, next driver said, he said, this is what I do. See, I, I'm in the car, too. Oh, so I would treat them just like I want to be treated because I want to get there safe. So if I'm driving in the mountains, I'm not trying to get close to the mountain. I'm trying to stay as far to the line as I can. If I'm driving down that sea, I have a good driving record. I haven't got a ticket in a long time. Don't want to get a ticket. So I'll keep to the speed limit. 
My wife made me get on me about not driving fast. But I stick with the speed. You stay in the same lane all the time, but I like to stay in the lane. The man said, you know what? You my driver. He said, I want you. All the rest of them are going to play careless and, 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 and unconcerned. But this man said he knows what to do. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. We come to the time where we got to know what to do. And notice it says, abstain from all appearance of evil. If it don't look right, don't sound right, stay away from it. That's why you have to have a spirit of discernment and know what God is speaking in these latter times. Then, uh huh, cease not to pray for souls to come to faith in Christ. The church, in these latter times, as we see the day approaching, to be ready when Jesus comes, we need to be praying for souls to be saved. We need to get out of ourselves, stop fussing and cussing and discussing with one another, and get on our knees and pray for our families to be saved. Amen. I know I'm preaching now. There's nobody in here who all your kid folks say. Somebody needs Jesus in your life. He said in, in, in Matthew the 9th chapter 37, 38 verse, he said, Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Notice what he said, pray ye that the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers. If we need to be praying that God not only send forth laborers, but help us to be laborers. In this latter time, what's going to count before when we stand before God? Our souls that we want to him. When it all boils down to it, it's not going to be what position you held or, or who knew you or all of that. It's going to be the souls that you helped come to Jesus. Yes. And when we really get soul orientated, we'll get out of our selfishness. Yes. 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 We'll get out of what we're trying to get out of something or what we try our personal agenda. When all of our agendas are on souls, it's on the right agenda for God to move. Amen. Are you listening today? Hallelujah. Then we're to cultivate the agape love in the body of Christ. What did I say? Cultivating the agape love, the love that casts out all fear, the love that is selfless love, the love that prefers one another, another over yourself. We are to cultivate that love. We're not to kill that love. We're to cultivate it. We're not to kill it by killing somebody's name because we don't like them. We're to cultivate love one for another. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews 10 chapter 24, 25. Let us do what? Let us consider one another. Notice that. Let us consider one another. Somebody say one another. Not ourselves, but somebody else. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. The first person we need to be considering is Jesus. The church belongs to Jesus. Now you may have invested money in this church for years, but guess what? This church still belongs to Jesus. It was bought and paid for by Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. We paid for the building, and the building is here, but Jesus controls the church. And the first thing we need to be doing is considering our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When we consider him, then we consider one another. Somebody say one another. <laughs> and do what? Consider one another to provoke unto what? Provoke unto, no, to provoke unto somebody to, to, to go off on you. Pro provoke unto somebody to feel bad because you done, you've done.